So we're going to do the Romans Road, and it's really what is called the Romans Road to Salvation. And as we go through it, you're going to notice that your handouts are a little bit different than what we have here, because I did the handout first, and then <laughs> when I was working on this, I added a little bit to it, but you'll be able, there's some room at the bottom, you can write down some stuff if you want to. So, <clears throat> The Romans Road lays out the plan of salvation through a series of Bible verses, uh, all from the book of Romans. So you can lead somebody to Christ only using the book of Romans. So it's, yes. it's pretty cool. So when, when arranged in order, these verses form an easy and a systematic way of explaining the message of salvation. There are many different versions of the Roman road with slight variations uh, in, in the scriptures that's used and stuff. So the one that I handed you, as I said, I've, I've added some to it at the end of it. But if you find another verse or, or maybe you want to add to these verses or something that you want to use, as long as it stays in the book of Romans, it'll be okay. Yeah, It could still be part of the Roman road. The basic message and the method is the same. And that's what we don't want to get away from is, is the simplicity of it and, and the message and, and the method. A lot of people memorize and use the Romans Road from memory. <clears throat> I don't for two reasons. One, I don't have that good of memory. And the other is, I think it's important to open the Bible and show people what the Bible says. Now, if you have it in your memory, and you can use verses here and there and, and say, you know, and, but when you, get, when you get to the point of getting serious with them, I think it's, it's always best if you can open the Bible and show them, okay, this is what I was talking about. Right. And take them through the verses. I like Romans 5, 8 to go with it, too. <clears throat> it's in there. Yeah. Is it in there? Absolutely. What well, I do miss it. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I did. I looked over it. <laughs> so, uh, where's that? So anyway, you can you can use it the way that you want to use it. You know, and and I'm I'm going to give you some ideas as we go through here, but uh, it's not. What I'm saying is not etched in stone because the Holy Spirit of God will lead you to use verses as, as He leads you, but this is a really good format to keep you focused. All right? So there's five uh, clear uh, points that I want to I want to make as we're getting started here. The first one is who needs salvation? That's the first thing we're going to talk about is who needs salvation? Point number two is why we need salvation. The third point is how God provides salvation. So it's who needs it, why we need it, and how God provides it. And then the fourth one is how we receive salvation. And then this is the one that I added after I had put the thing together, is the results of salvation. And as I was going through and doing this, I realized that, you know, it's important for people to get saved, but it's important for them to understand a little bit of what happens, you know, what happened be because of them being saved. And so there's a whole lot more I could have added to that. I trimmed it down so we could, you know, keep it simple. That's the main thing, is keeping it simple when you're, when you're dealing with people like me. So, the five points, who needs salvation, why we need salvation, how God provides salvation, how we receive salvation, and the results of salvation. So, let's talk about the Romans Road of Salvation. So, <clears throat> point number one, everyone needs salvation because we have all sinned. Yes. 
Now, was that the first so, point you said, who needs salvation? Yes, who needs it? And the, to answer the question is everyone. Yes. And so, uh, Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. It says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So, in that passage of Scripture, nobody is left out. I went through and I underlined when it says none, not one, and all. And uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, what seven. Was that, Daddy? I counted seven times there in those three verses that God makes it very clear that there is none, not a person, that doesn't need salvation. So, it says the scripture says, no one is righteous, not even one person. No one is truly wise, no one is seeking God, all have turned away, all have become useless, no one does good, not a single one. So, that pretty much answers the question of who needs salvation. But let's don't stop there. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The word all is all-encompassing. That's Romans 3.23. Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. <clears throat> so what we conclude at the end of this, this first one there is who needs salvation is all. Every person. Yes. So the second thing is why we need salvation and the price or the consequence of sin is death. That's why every person needs salvation because the price or the consequence of sin is death. Romans 6, 23. Yes. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes. So the price of sin is death, and Jesus Christ died for our sins. He paid the price for our death. Yes. Romans 5 8. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we've seen that we all need it. The consequence of it is death. And Christ took care of it for us. Christ died for our sins. Point number four. How we receive salvation. It 
we receive salvation and eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. There's no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's not in Romans. So we're not using John them. 14 6? <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's John 14 6, but we're in Romans Road. So we're not using that one. Romans 10 9 through 11, and then verse 13. Yes. It says. <clears throat> That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And then in verse 13 it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, you've heard me when I'm teaching and when I'm preaching, and I will often use Romans 10, 8 through 13. Use all the verses in there. Uh, sometimes I leave out verse 11 and 12. I just use 9, 10, and 13. I say there's variations that you can use but the point, the message and the method doesn't change. Right. All right. So, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's right. For it's by believing in your heart that you're made right with God and it's by confessing with your mouth that you're saved. So, that's get you to the bottom of your hand out there. So, point number five is the results of salvation. And this is the one that I added in later. <laughs> Salvation through Jesus Christ brings us into a relationship of peace with God. <coughs> Let me repeat that. Salvation through Jesus Christ brings us into a relationship of peace with God. Yes. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into His grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Yes. What verse was that again? Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. So, since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God, because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. Now, it's up to us to uh, enjoy that peace. It's there for us through Jesus Christ. Jesus himself said, my peace I give to you. We have to accept it. Just like we accept his salvation, we have to accept his peace. And sometimes, when it seems like that the world is falling down around us, we need to go to him for peace. Because he's promised it. 
promised it to us. And he will provide it, but we have to access it. It's there. It's like if, it's like if you had a if you had a million dollars in the bank and you never used it, it wouldn't do you any good. But if you need a Coke, you can go access some of that money and get it. It's the same way with this promise of God for peace in our lives. It's there. We just have to withdraw it from our account. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's one of the benefits of salvation. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Romans 8 1. The key to Romans 8 1 is that the believer should walk after the Spirit. That Spirit there in Romans 8 1 is a capital S Spirit. It's the Superman Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit of God. The verse says that there is, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, comma, who walk not after the flesh, comma, but after the spirit. So our spirit, our walk, I should say, after the spirit and not after the flesh is what determines our relationship with God. We need to understand that verse because people use it wrongly. If you walk after the flesh, you're going to reap of the flesh even if you're a Christian. Amen. Now, don't take what I'm saying wrong and go run down, oh, I can lose my salvation. That's not what it's talking about. <laughs> it's talking about messing up your relationship. Yes. Messing up your relationship. And being ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ. And you don't want me to start on the judgment seat of Christ tonight. <laughs> but it's important to look to that. Yes. So that we walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. In other words, we walk being led by the Holy Spirit of God. Sometimes I think we like to walk in front of the Holy Spirit of God and ask Him to follow along and bless what we're doing. <laughs> That's not what the verse says. No. It says to walk after the Spirit. Let Him be the leader. We'll stay out of trouble. All right. The next one. Romans chapter 8 verses 38 and 39. It says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, neither height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That includes us. Yes, amen. It does. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that can separate a believer from their Savior. No matter what you come up with, no matter what you come up with, God is bigger, God is stronger, and God is better. So, there are benefits to salvation that add to eternal life. It adds to the quality 
of that eternal life. So, responding to the Romans road is if you believe what you have read in these verses, you can respond by receiving God's free gift of salvation today. That's where it starts. So, here's how to take a personal journey down the Romans road. Admit you're a sinner. Understand that as a sinner, you deserve death. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross to save you from sin and death. Repent by turning from your old life of sin to a new life in Christ. And receive through faith in Jesus Christ his free gift of salvation. Now, for anybody watching this on the video who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, I can't think of a more clear way to lay it out for you to understand the need that you have for Jesus Christ. So if you will just follow these five simple steps that I just gave you. Admit you're a sinner. Understand that as a sinner you deserve death. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross to save you from that death. Repent from your sin by turning to Jesus Christ, asking him to come into your heart and to save you. Receiving him through faith, his free gift of 